Intelligence leaker Edward Snowden revealed privacy concerns within the National Security Agency's inner workings. Now there are some new questions being raised regarding another government agency and its practices. There are reports today of the Drug Enforcement Agency's partnership with American telecom giant AT&T. Now the report says the agency has been paying AT&T for access to phone records since 2007 and joining me now is Dominic Romano, managing member of Romano Law. He is an attorney specializing in corporate law and has been following the case. What's your reaction to this revelation? Well, it's startling. Mm -hmm. The scope of it is, is really unbelievable. The NSA, as you know, it's been revealed, they keep records for five years. Yeah. Uh, phone numbers, data, uh, cell towers, things of the sort. This program goes back to 1987. And it started in 2007. They're looking at 26 years of phone records. Mm. Really, that's, that's incredible in scope. And it's domestic. Drug enforcement, mostly. Does it, does it go beyond what you consider a, a, a proper relationship between the government and, and corporate America? Possibly, because of the lack of oversight here. There are no records. This was made uh, public. The New York Times had the story yesterday through a Freedom of Information Act um, report. But there doesn't appear to be a lot of uh, record keeping here, a lot of disclosure to the public on the scope of this. Yes. Were subpoenas uh, involved in this process? There are subpoenas, but there are administrative subpoenas which don't involve judicial oversight. They don't involve judicial approval or the grand jury process. Uh, the, the Obama administration says uh, that uh, there are no novel, I don't know what novel means, no novel privacy issues here. Do you well, believe the administration when it says that? They're right in a sense. I mean, this has been going on for years. There are 335 different laws, federal laws, that allow for administrative uh, subpoenas. The Supreme Court ruled in 1950 that su su administrative subpoenas are fine so long as they're uh, reasonable, they have a reasonable relationship to the investigation that's going on, mm -hmm. the right agency issues the authority, and that the scope, the duration is reasonable. So in that sense, it's not novel. It's a common uh, investigative technique in the, uh, in the Drug Enforcement Toolkit. It, it, but your issue is that it goes beyond what you consider the proper limits uh, of government surveillance. It's just too much data. Well, the issue is who controls the who controllers? Controls. Who's supervising this? You know, in 2010, the, the uh, investigator revealed that the FBI had been routinely misusing uh, administrative subpoenas. So what's going on now? Who's, who's um, overseeing what the DEA is doing? What do you want to happen here? You want it shut down? I think that would be a mistake. A complete shutdown okay. because you know it, it's work. There are a number of situations. There was uh, earlier this year a uh, South Carolina woman, uh, several bombing threats. They were able to track her down using the system. Uh, someone impersonated a general over at San Diego Naval Base and ran over an intelligence officer. So what are you asking for? They used it. Oversight. Oversight. Disclosure. Congress. Supervision. Doing its job. Not a bad idea. <laughs> Dominic Romano is our guest. He's the managing member of a Romano Law. Good to talk to you, Dominic. Pleasure. Thank you. Uh, Canada's oil.